maybe. Good morning here on the KM Activities, your home for the Comets, as well as Dodge County Wildcat Hockey. I'm Joel McCall. This is kind of weird because we're doing this during Bridge, which is actually talking about FFA and FCCLA. And we have Lauren Elias with us. She is a senior at the Casamaryville School District and part of FFA. Lauren, thank you very much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me on. I'm really excited to get to talk to you about yeah, all this. Yeah, exactly. So I want to know, first of all, about your role in the FFA chapter. So tell me about uh, what your senior year has been like and what you're doing. So my senior year has been a little different. I am the vice president of our chapter. Um, and we don't get to do as much activities as we would like to do. But um, we did have the opportunity to um, go to Pago's house and do some things for um, regional convention. So we got to put together like boutonnieres and things like that, which was really fun and a chance to help her out on her farm as well. Um, it's been so different. We don't get to do things like our annual egg day dinner, like we could put on or our annual petting zoo. Um, but we find other ways to contribute. We put bags together for the Dorothy day house and things like that. So that's awesome. Yeah. I, I want to know about the petting zoo now. What, you've done this in the past? We have, yeah. Okay, where did th where'd this all take place? Well, it usually takes place in the um, elementary school in their community at, I believe, that gym. And uh, we bring in, we ask um, students from either intro to ag classes or just are some of our FFA members who maybe have animals to bring them in. And uh, we make sure that we have sanitizer stations all around. So, you know, if you pet them, you have to clean your hands before you can move on to the <laughs> next one. And then we also have outside animals like, you know, horses and like little calves and things like that to pet too. So it's really fun. Yeah, I was going to say the little kids are going to love that. <laughs> uh, there was a joint effort last week with the FCCLA. What did you two groups get together and do? So we got the opportunity to put something together for CTE, which is co um, career and technical education. So we went around and we actually got candy bars for all of our teachers and they got to pick one. And it just had a note saying like, you're made of gold and with an on the inside, just thanking them for being able to teach during this difficult time. And this changing year has just been so hard on them. And so it was just really amazing to get to work with them, like still being able to get together and do this for the teachers. Yeah, for sure. And I know I even got a candy bar. I'm not a teacher, by the way, but I still <laughs> got one. Your vice president, what's your role as a vice president? So I preside over meetings. I um, mainly make sure that everyone is has something to do or is doing what they're supposed to do. And then the president is, which is Gabby Espinoza. She's the one that just makes sure that everything's going smoothly. Um, I also give feedback. So I'm the main communication between the rest of our members, our secretary and our treasurer. Um, and then I also relay for the advisor as well. And I just help everyone communicate in our group. So is there anybody in your group that is uh, on a region or state board? Um, there is not. Uh, we did have a national officer um, last year, Leif Arswald, who was who got the opportunity to become a national officer. He wasn't from our region, but he was from the state, which is so awesome because you don't really see that that much. So. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Well, I was part of FFA and uh, back in my day, and we got to do the fruit sales like you, and I want mm -hmm. to ask about that in just a second. There was also competitions. So were, did you guys able to do any like competitions where you go out and we did, I think it was like FFA radio and some other stuff was... Is that prominent up here or no? Um, it is. We did get to do um, a radio interview. So we do that um, every year and he calls us up. And this year was a little different because um, we weren't doing it like at a convention where you, so you sit down at the table and you talk to him. You had to do it over the phone. Um, we also get to do things like dairy judging. You can go to state and regional conventions for that. Yeah. Um, and then discussion me is what Gabby and Austin got to participate in and they actually made it to state convention, I believe. So it was really cool that, you know, we still get to do that stuff, even though it's online this year. So dairy dredging is a little different. Um, you're not actually in a barn, you're doing it from a computer looking at images. So it's, it is different. Um, but yeah, <laughs> at least you're able to, to do some stuff I yes. mean, that, that matters. And all right, tell me about your FFA fruit. Cause I know the sales went uh, really well. And even though I'm sure you didn't get the knock on everybody's door, you still got a chance to do it. Yes. It was really interesting. We didn't know if we were going to be able to do it just because there was a lot of handling and it was still kind of toward, you know, a really serious time in the, um, COVID. Yes. So, um, 
we asked Langmo and, you know, other like the members if we think people would have been comfortable with it or if we could still do it. And they said, yeah, it is, you know, we would love to like still be able to sell fruit. It's one of our um, main sources of income for the year. So it's a big help to us as well as donations that we get from around the community where we write thank you letters. And so, yeah, it was really, it was really amazing just to be able to do that. I mean, so many people buy the fruit and love it. So many teachers mm -hmm. buy it. So <laughs> it's just super amazing. Yeah. If you've never bought FFA fruit before, like reach out and this goes to anyone and wherever you are, reach out to a local school. They have an FFA advisor. Find who sells the fruit because it is delicious. I'm still waiting to have the, um, there was the sausage links or beef sticks or beef. Yeah, I think yeah. it's the beef sticks that I got. Uh, Dana can't have those right now. So <laughs> I had to freeze those. So I'm waiting until pregnancy's over with. So I, yeah. I, I was good, but <laughs> those are so good. And it's hard to wait on. Yeah, we don't do just fruit. Like right. you said, we have meats, we have cheese spreads, cheeses, and all everything. So yeah. the beef sticks are amazing. So <laughs> I got to wait on those. Uh, how about Mrs. Pagel? Tell me about her because I, I get the chance to talk to her once in a while. Uh, she's very quiet across the hall, so I don't hear from her very often. But I know she's a great FFA advisor. She is. She is so. She's such like a wonderful, kind-hearted person. She's very open to talking like if you don't know something she's very much so willing to help you with anything that you need and she's she seems very soft spoken but she's very passionate and and advocating for egg and what we do and so she's very opening to talking about with anyone who's interested and it's so amazing because i think that she's one of the most amazing people to talk to with people have questions or are wondering you know why should i join this or why are we doing this and she always has like the great answers of like well this is why we do it and we want to give back to our community and you know we love to volunteer and be able to help everyone so it's just super amazing that she's so opening yeah. like openly talking about it and she's a great advocator for it well, you really hit on another question, and that is, why would you join FFA? And what would you tell somebody that is kind of on the fence and they would say, well, what did you get out of it? So um, I think the main reason why you should join FFA is all the career pathways that it takes you down. Um, when you join conventions, you get the opportunity to actually go through college expos. And so you get a chance to meet future connections, whether it's through a workforce career or a college career or even just a trade in general. And it's so amazing because you get the variety of like finance all the way to transportation if, um, to products. And it's amazing because you get to make those connections. Those people email you and you still get to talk to them. And it's awesome that now you have that person that you can contact if you have questions. Um, it also teaches you so many leadership skills. I mean, communication is a huge one, especially in any any type of business that you do. You're always going to have to communicate with someone. Um, it teaches you to deal with difficult people. You know, we have um, certain um, like leadership events that help you deal with public speaking and how to deal with problems that may arise and like adapt to them quickly, but doing it very calmly. And I think that that's super important. And then like just the teamwork that goes into it too. So. Yeah, it's a great networking piece. You learn a lot, and it's not just about farming because that's the thing yeah. too. Is Future Farmers of America? It's there's just so many different avenues you could take with FFA. And Lauren, are you in other organizations besides FFA at the school, or is this it? Um, it's mainly FFA. I was in um, AFS for a little bit, but it's mo it's now only FFA. <laughs> yeah, just, just focusing in on that. How about your family? I want to know a little bit about your family. So. Um, like my mom and dad. Yeah. Too. Yep. Okay. So my dad drives um, freight for FedEx. So he works five days a week, weekends, sometimes holidays. And then my mom is actually a secretary for a company that had just started a trucking company called Big Woods Trucking. Um, and so she works at the office full time. And then my sister is actually a senior at UW River Falls and she's going into agronomy. She's super excited <laughs> about it. And I'm super proud of her because she's worked hard for it. I mean, she's getting internships and it was just a great avenue for her. Um, my older brother, Adrian, is actually in the workforce. So he works for Highland Systems over in West Concord and he absolutely loves it. School wasn't really for him and yeah. he found the right path for himself. And it's super amazing to see him succeed in that. Yeah. Um, and then my younger brother, Anton is actually a sophomore. <laughs> he is 
taller than all of us, I believe now. <laughs> he's like six four something. And yeah, my sister is the shortest. Um, she's about like five, six maybe. And it's funny because she is the oldest. So when we take pictures from oldest to youngest, um, it goes a little up and down, but we get it. So <laughs> that's awesome. Have you told your brother to get involved in organizations, even if it's just not FFA? Oh, I have told him. I was just like, the school offers such a variety of things. Yeah. And it's good to just be a part of one. Um, it's good to show commitment to something, too. Schools like to see that, that you're going to be involved in something, especially if he plans on going to college, which I don't know what his career plan is yet. But, no. you know, he's got time to figure that out. Yeah. But it's just amazing to be involved, even if it's in a sport, because you get to make those group connections and you get to learn those communication yeah. and teamwork skills that you're going to use forever. Yeah, Lauren's 100% right about that. How about your future? You're about to graduate. Finally, all the seniors are back in school school and I know. so that uh, it's exciting next week everybody's here but you're almost done so do you have future plans um i am thinking about nursing so i would get my generals on rctc and then probably transfer to mankato state um otherwise i was thinking about ptsd psychology i don't really know if that's a career path that i want to take right now um, but my other career path was dental hygiene, and I would just take those courses through RCTC. It cuts costs, and it's a two-year degree, but you still have a great job. And they're all things that I'm very much so interested in. And so, yeah, so you're gonna dip your toes in a few wa waters and see what happens. Oh yeah, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. <laughs> I want to have options. <laughs> yeah, I think that's smart. Uh, community college, that's where I went. So I'm, yeah, that's that's a smart avenue to go and. Well, congratulations on all the success at the FFA chapter. Uh, congratulations for graduating and getting out of here in a few months. And thank you so much for stopping by, Lauren. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. you for having me. You bet. Lauren Elias, then. I'm Joel McCall. Uh, tonight, we have other things going on for KM Activities. We're just talking about sports a little bit. Girls hockey is tonight, 7 o'clock. Puck drops over at the Ice Palace, and they are playing Gentry Academy. It's another tough team for the girls. Boys basketball is tonight on KM Activities Channel 2. I'll be covering that one at Home Federal Arena, and that starts at 7.15, but the C-Squad and JV will also be on Channel 2, and you can follow that, I believe, at 4.45. For Lauren Elias, I'm Joel McCall. Thank you so much for tuning in here on KM Activities.